Now, the power of BIM is that we can count all of these objects that we've placed. We can get dimensions from them. Now, it's a bit kind of strange, the process for doing it, but, um, but extremely general and you can count anything. So I'm gonna go back to my uh, generic model lumber here. Uh, that's what I'm using, right? Uh, lumber, yeah, generic model lumber 2021. Uh, so I'm gonna open that up and I'm gonna modify it slightly. Um, I go to a front view, uh, I've got the length here. Now, um, I need to put another dimension on here. And so uh, I'm gonna create another uh, aligned dimension. And I wanna get the length of these and put them in a schedule. And Revit won't let me put this length in the schedule. So I have to create what's called a reporting parameter to do that. So uh, I'm gonna go here and create a new parameter and it's going to be a shared parameter. And this is a bit uh, complicated here. Uh, it has to be an instance parameter and a reporting parameter. Whoops, I don't have one selected. Um, so a shared parameter instance parameter, reporting parameter. Actually, I was doing it right. So I'll click on this. And uh, I'm gonna create a parameter and it's going to be a instance parameter reporting parameter and it's gonna be a shared parameter. I have to select it. Now I've already created one called MJC length uh, and you can see what that looks like. So uh, I have stored it on my desktop in a parameter file here. Um, and um, I'm gonna pick MJC length as my shared reporting parameter. Uh, and um, and um, so now it shows up here and I can tell it, okay. So I've got a shared reporting parameter here. Now I'm gonna save it. And um, I'm gonna load it into my project. And, uh, and now this parameter, these um, lumber pieces uh, have a new parameter over here called MJC length, and they have one called uh, length as well. I can change length, but I can't change MJC length because it's actually a copy of length. So, um, but because it's a reporting parameter, I can actually put it into a schedule. So I can go here to schedules and, and right click, get a new schedule. And this is a generic model. So I'll click make a schedule of generic models. I'm going to call it, um, you know, lumber though. Uh, and, uh, and then I've got all these parameters that I can put into it. So I'm going to put a uh, family in it and I'm going to put the type in it and you'll see MJC length is there. So I'm going to put that one in there too. Uh, and uh, just for kind of fun, I'm going to put the volume in there. Uh, and um, and just tell it, okay. And, uh, and you see, I've got all of these pieces of lumber and just how long they are. I've also got the void objects, which I don't really want. So I can filter uh, and uh, filter by, uh, um, 
well, I can sort them and sort them by family and sort them by type and sort them by length uh, and have them a little bit better organized. So I see all of these pieces that I've placed, uh, two by sixes, two by sixes, some two by eights, tells me exactly how long they need to be cut uh, to uh, uh, build this little house. So, uh, so the idea is that you could use this list to uh, cut, to laser cut uh, the material that you wanna use for building a model and then put the model together. There's a few extra uh, complexities there, uh, uh, especially for the rafters because the rafters have some, uh, some uh, parts cut away. But uh, if I go here uh, to a um, uh, plan view, I can create a section through my model uh, and I could pull that section view back to where you're just seeing that one rafter and, uh, and I could uh, pick this rafter and uh, isolate it. And now I have exactly how to cut that rafter. So I could use that drawing uh, on a laser template and lay out all my rafters and cut them all precisely to the size they need to be. So, uh, so the goal here is to build a digital model that we can use to make a physical model. And that corresponds to the real world of building a digital model to make a real building uh, where you really get the power of BIM.